10 Stories About What It's Like To Be Autistic According to Reddit Number 10 It's different for everyone. I have Asperger's Syndrome, a mild form of autism that affects me more socially than anything. I live a normal life in that I work full time and go to university too. I don't need or want care or supervision. Here are the ways in which it affects my life. Number 1. I have my interests and obsessions. I get intensely interested in something for a period of time. Mine tend to go on for about a year. In the past, it's been burlesque, pinup girls, medieval history, motorcycles, etc. I don't really collect things, I just learn as much about it as I possibly can and spend a huge chunk of time doing so. Number 2. I struggle with sarcasm and innuendo, and I don't make facial expressions that match my emotions. I've been told before while apologizing that I don't look sorry, but I have literally no idea what a sorry look is. However, my friends, all three of them, that's more than me, nigga, get, get me, and know that I'm an awful liar anyway, so they tend to not worry about my sincerity. Number three, I'm also affectionate. I'm guessing they mean I'm not affectionate. I, I, I'm also not affectionate at all. My friends know not to be all huggy and kissy as it makes me super uncomfortable. I like my personal sp space and I am very defensive about it. I'm guessing this is a female. And as rude as this may come off, you need to either grow the fuck up and, and respect the fact that it's true. Or, um, you know, you can just get the fuck out of here. If this is a female with autism, she's living an easier life than a, a man with autism would live. Because look... Uh, guys will bend over backwards for anything. Doesn't matter how attractive the female is, if she's got thangs and, and a slot, you know what I'm talking about? It's going to be easier for her socially than it would be for um, for a guy. I don't care how rude it comes off, it's, it's, it's the utter truth. And if you know anything about the world in which you're living, then you'll know that it's true. Most women are crazy, and not saying that autism is a form of crazy, but if it were, it would just be a different flavor. Number four. I can go into sensory overload, but it has to be specific circumstances for it to happen. Shopping malls tend to be the perfect storm of triggers. Loud noises, bright lights, people bumping into me, easy to get lost, etc, etc. Number 5. I have a very high IQ. I'm aware that doesn't make me smart, per se, but it's a thing. My psychologist had me tested when I was 19 and it came out at 143. I process information very quickly, and I acquire new information and retain it easily. Number 6. I am very logical. I don't get lost in fantasy land. Even when I read films and I watch, if I can't believe it, I can't enjoy it. So I, do I don't enjoy Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, etc., and people act like I killed their dog when I inform them of this. I That's sad that I guess certain autistic people can't enjoy things that I guess you have to suspend your disbelief um, to be immersed in. But, okay, I guess it's got to be really realistic or they don't buy it. Number seven, I had to learn to have a filter on what I say, and sometimes I slip up. When I was a kid, I used to say all kinds of inappropriate shit to adults, and as I was undiagnosed until 18, I just thought I was ill-mannered. My psychologist helped me heaps and my mom has been great ever since I received a diagnosis. And she apologized for all the ass kickings as a kid. Ha ha. Number eight. Not so much anymore, but I used to fidget. Specifically, I used to spin things in circles, just whatever I was holding. I never got an explanation as to why I did this, and I just got told that it's common in autistic kids. I would like to say that life is far better for me now than it was as a child. School was literally the worst. In school, people pick on anyone that's different, and Australia seems to have the huge anti-intellectualism culture. I was bullied horribly for my preference of books over people. However, I was suddenly very useful when it came to trivia or assignments, or anything that required thinking. If you have any questions about my experience, please ask away. I'm very open about it, and if you want to learn, I'll gladly be of assistance. So there's number 10 from the first autistic person. Uh, a response here reads, if I may ask, what makes you lose your interest after about a year? Is it because you found something more interesting to spend your time on, or is it for other reasons? 
and then somebody responds, usually I kind of find something else and drift away from it. I'll revisit it from, from, what? I'll revisit it from time to time, but I generally don't regain the interest on the same le level. Somebody else responds, I'm not OP, but Asperger's, it's not sudden. Just a gradual loss of interest, and as I find all of these easily available content in my interest. Occasionally, there will be something that just grabs me, and I mostly drop the other interest. Personally, though, my interests are shortles. Shortle? Fuck oh, oh. Fuck me. I'm catching it. That's not funny, but it's a joke. Okay. So either you can laugh or you can fucking die. I'm kidding. My interests are shorter, several months, and are more variable. And are more variable length. More variable. I can also have none of them or multiple at times, and they can repeat. Well, all right, guys. Number nine. Oh, unusual soup, who I'm guessing is the person who asked the question, hey, autism, what it like? What it do like? Hey, what it do be like is that? Hey, people with autism, what it do be like is? And people say, you have just made me really happy. I just created an account to respond to you, and I read threads and have never felt the need to respond. I am a 25-year-old nanny to an autistic 5-year-old, and I can read him. I can read him faster than anyone else can. Okay. I've learned to adapt to his needs, and with therapy and a specialist, and lots of coaching, he is a very verbal child now. The stares and rude comments from strangers are very upsetting, but thankfully he is oblivious to them for, now, for, for now. What the fuck are all these elves coming from? He loves routine, and used to be very obsessive about every little thing in his daily life. He has really come out of his shell in the last two years but he is very selective of who can be around him. It's so nice and refreshing to see such a nice person on the internet and know that my cute little five-year-old has the chance to one day be, com be comfortable enough to talk to strangers. Thank you so much for giving me a little hope on a rough day and all the best to you. Who the hell is Unusual Soup? Oh shit, Unusual Soup is actually like the top commenter. He's not, he's not the, um, the person who originally asked the question what autism what autism be do like is an unusual suit responded but we'll come back to that later so number eight says as an autistic person what's being not autistic like and somebody else said the therapist who diagnosed me told me this story about how one of her patients basically thought why is everyone so fucking geek weird for about 17 years before he got diagnosed because he genuinely didn't realize that he might be the odd one. That's me as well. Someone else responds, I should probably see a therapist then. I recognize myself in more than a few of the answers given in this thread. This one in particular triggered a few slightly uncomfortable emotions. And somebody else said, just remember that no matter what the doctor tells you, you're the same person you've always been. You just may have a name to some of your behaviors. Good. Good that everybody is like growing the fuck up and, and having to be told things that they should already know about themselves. You dirty motherfucker. Number seven. I have high functioning autism. He's not the only one. A wacka wacka. Kyle's autistic tonight. Just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You know, I was I was making the tabs today and I and I wrote mayonnaise. That's not autistic. But is it? You know? Anyway, look, I have a high functioning autism as well as anxiety, so some of this may be the anxiety, but I find it really hard to maintain friendships at all. Look, Gael, calm that shit down and read this properly. I have high functioning autism. God, it's coming out of me. And I I'm not saying that the, the list is triggering me. I'm just an idiot. I'm just an idiot. Look, I haven't been recording because A, I haven't had an environment that is adequate. Like you can probably hear a lot of feedback right now and it's because the place in which I'm recording right now is just a waste, but it's the only place that I have right now. Okay. So that aside, um, I, I also can't like focus. So, you know, attention deficit disorder or hyperactive deficit disorder may be a different thing if I got it, but I don't probably just need to calm the fuck down, smack myself in the face and get to business. So let's, that's what we're going to do right now. Number seven, I have high functioning autism as well as anxiety. So some of this may be the anxiety, but I find it really hard maintaining friendships at all. For example, I left 1.5 years ago and haven't spoken to one of them in over a year because I quite honestly didn't know how. I also find communicating really hard. It takes a lot of effort 
and I would find meeting someone new really hard with me having no idea where to go past hello, and me getting a stutter is also quite likely. I don't cope well with the changes from a routine, for example, I will eat the same meals each day and foods, but going off of it is really quite stressful. I am also really bad with emotions, I rarely talk about them at all, and won't unless I'm prompted explicitly, and I'm really oblivious on the whole and really can't explain it. A bit like trying to explain what left is to someone with no place to reference. Yeah, that's what's up. A bit of another side effect is the moment I have no, as at the moment, I have no social life. I mean, that's true of most of the people on the internet, most of the people in this thread. A lot of you people don't have a social life, myself included. I guess. But this is a social thing, in a way. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll read it, maybe. Maybe I'll even comment back. See? That's being social. As I don't know how to keep one, the last one that I had was at school and I won't describe it as close owning to the fact I never saw them outside of school. Um, what comes naturally to most people takes a lot of leering for me as I always felt a step behind if not further. At the moment at least, I would love to be just a normal person and have this sort of stuff come naturally. All in all, I would say a bit lonely and frustrated when I notice I'm quite happy most of the time but just the smallest thing can hit and change that. I am doing what I can to get better, but it takes a lot of effort for what it is, for what is for most people as simple as writing. Well, you poor thing. I hope you get the support you need, brah. Number six. You know that time you said something stupid and everyone looked at you and you grew a second head? Imagine feeling that, like that every time you talk to somebody. An interesting point though, an interesting point though, many high functioning autistic people are incapable of the self-awareness necessary to make it so that they have any kind of shame when they are clearly like not shutting the hell up when they need to shut the hell up, are getting looks from people, you know what I'm talking about? Some of these people are oblivious to the fact that there's a time and a place for everything and that time and place is not now. You know what I mean? That you need to adjust your volume because ain't nobody talking that loud. Do you get what I'm saying? That you're telling joke after joke after joke after joke that nobody finds funny. And it's clear that nobody finds it funny because nobody is laughing and you're probably even getting dirty looks. You know what I mean? They're incapable of seeing things like, you know, you not people not wanting you near them or in a conversation that you have in a way invited yourself into. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, oh God, it's just nuts. It's just nuts. Some people are oblivious and it's not just autistic people as well but i'm saying there are autistic people that you know they're not just doing things that they consider embarrassing over and over because they can't help it they're doing things over and over and not even realizing how embarrassing it you know it is because they themselves are not embarrassed because they don't recognize it someone else responds to this post about you know that doing a stupid thing and everybody looks at you imagine doing that all the time or every time you open your mouth somebody responds a friend of mine explained it to me like this imagine you're meeting someone new and right off the gate they dump i got molested as a child so that kind of that kind of like a duck in a cold weather you'd have a fearful mix of holy shit what the fuck do i say now but also wait what do they actually mean by that and you get that feeling for almost every conversation with everyone forever. I'm not jealous. I got molested as a child, so that's kind of like a duck in cold weather. Look, man, I'm gonna say it like this, okay? Bless you autistics. The, the ones that actually have this shit, you know, not just kids with Asperger's, not not that there's anything wrong with actual Asperger's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not like uh, denying the credibility of it or saying that people can get over it or just put some effort into it and, you know, make make a normal uh, social existence happen. I'm just saying that the people who actually have this, I hope that you have the one where you're oblivious, because if you actually have to live knowing that the things that you're saying and the things that you're doing are just missing the mark in a way where people are immediately categorizing you in social circles and in their brain as the weird guy or the weird girl is so sad and like i said before i don't care how you feel about it because if you don't agree with me you're wrong deal with it the girls have it easier 
Because girls can get away with a lot, son. They can get away with a lot. You don't know if you haven't lived, but one day you will live, baby. Number five. My go-to analogy is imagine being in a country where nobody speaks English and you don't speak their language. You don't have a, you don't have a phrase book, but you do have a translation dictionary. So you are speaking the words, but the syntax is way off, not to mention accent and pronunciation. You might think you're making sense and communicating well, but really people will be confused by you. That's sad. Somebody responds and says, I met a Chinese guy in the Philippines who only spoke Chinese. He used Google Translate to talk to other people. He was confused all the time and everyone liked him. <laughs> it was actually really awesome because a conversation could be saying his name kind of loud. Then smile at him and he would be excited. The outcome of trying to communicate with him was always insanely positive because nothing could be negative and we would often just laugh. I want to be able to do some of that with other people, but I guess that is the difference between because people expect you to speak their language. What? Listen to me, listen to me. Wh where is this going? That, that, that was gonna spiral out of control if I let it. That really was, that was gonna spiral out of control if I let it. Number four, social interactions that come to others naturally require a lot of thought and planning in my situation. For lack of a better analogy, I have a mental checklist for every social event under the sun. Obsessions are amped up from non-autistic people as are following rituals. Every night when I get home, I have dinner and watch The Simpsons. No ifs, ands, or buts. I work as a chef, and my supervisor and I have a certain code word, traffic, that if I mention it out of the blue, it means I need to cool off for a few. I'm getting overloaded here. I've got more to post, but I'm also working breakfast, so I'll leave for now. Edit. Number one. The kitchen environment is fairly stressful, but we have a great team that I know has my back. And we have a fairly simple menu, so it's more a high volume of orders than it is stressful. My supervisor and head chef is a great guy, and I have the foresight to mention that I have autism the first service we worked. It's a fairly new place, so we were there together from day one. We often hang out outside of work, so we are, pre we are pretty in touch with each other. He's not a pushover though, so I know not to take a break if we are deep in the weeds. Since we opened mid-October, I've only had to use the code word once. Admittedly, he soon followed me in, banging our heads against the door after an unusually bad experience with an apprentice. We have this sort of relationship where we joke around with each other, and he calls me Gump. I made fun of his mis misspelled arm tattoo and that sort of thing. Haha, uh -huh. he got a tattoo and that shit's misspelled. Oh... And, and the other guy's the autistic one. And number two, social interactions. When I say mental checklist, it's more like a di dichotomous, dichotomous? That's gotta be how that's pronounced. Yo, internet, um, you know, dichotomous, dichotomous. Dichotomous, dichotomous. How come you can't pronounce it? <sighs> Bitch. Dichotomous. Dichotomous. Well, you gotta say it like a. Dichotomous. A dichotomous. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa, my bad. Oh god, that's another. Oh god. Oh my god. Okay. Dichotomous. Key in my head that's really, uh, you know, tattoo sort of thing, apparently. What? Um, did I say tattoo in my head? Key in my head that's really drawn out. For example, I frequent my local nightclub, so my checklist may read as follows. Nice security guard, light banter, don't get startled by the joke noogie, jerk security guard, don't hang out, bar quiet, engage bartender in conversation, ask for cocktail, bar packed, just order, woman animated in conversation, leave them be, woman bored, lonely looking, smiling at me, approach and engage in banter, attempt pickup, etc. Okay. 
All this is almost in a robotic voice in my psyche, i.e. not natural at all. My routine, if my routine is disturbed, I get moody, but it's, it's not a catastrophe. Of course, if I'm not at home or something comes up, I've learned to let it go. But if possible, I follow the routine to a T. Okay. All right. While I live a pretty normal life, I have a lot of issues with sensory sensitivity. Like loud noises, bright lights, certain food tastes, smells, standing in crowds of people. These things make me feel a bit stressed out, resulting in various issues like headaches and digestive problems. While we're not while we're on the subject, certain non-autistic people have the misconception that those of us on the spectrum would lack empathy. That is simply not true. We often have a hard time reading people, but we certainly do not lack human empathy. That needed to be said. Somebody else said, I actually think that we have too much empathy. I oftentimes get visibly upset when I feel I hurt someone. Somebody else says, I have a huge time trouble telling people that they've made a mistake. I've let people go calling me by the wrong name or I change the subject in conversation because the idea of making someone feel bad or making an error is intolerable. That's one bugger to get around. Well, a lot of people are just non-confrontational to, to the point of being a pussy. It's what, it was worse as a teenager. I was once frozen to the spot for three minutes outside a teacher's door because knocking would interrupt them. Mm -hmm. Never mind that I had to see them and that they were expecting it, it might slightly inconvenience them and it would be my fault. I'm glad that stage is mostly over with. Somebody else said, I do the opposite. Uh oh, is this a budding Kyle? I often point out mistakes because I think I would want to know and therefore think I'm courteous. I do this without personal judgment. We all make mistakes all the time, but my criticism is usually taken as judgment, especially because I lack appropriate facial expressions and recognition. I used to do this more often and have learned to tone it down. Nonetheless, it still comes up several times a week. Very small things I say without any ill will and people take them as insults. I have to be constantly vigilant. On the flip side, I'm good, or I think I'm good, at receiving critical feedback. I'm a perfectionist, but I rarely, if ever, take people's comments personally. The feedback is just data, and my assumption that we're both, say, a supervisor and I, aiming for improvement, I always appreciate direct and clear communication. Sounds like a man in a relationship, you know what I mean? God forbid I tell you something that's, you know, real, as opposed to just holding it in or sugarcoating it and putting it in a stupid ass way for your bitch ass. You know what I'm talking about? God damn, motherfucker. I'm kidding. Um, number two, if I, wait, I was diagnosed with Asperger's at the age of 11. I feel like I'm part of a play where everyone has the script except me. How poetic and sad. How poetic and sad. Poetic and sad, just like your dad. How poetic and sad. A response to this says, I'm with you, Bacon. Who is this guy's name? His name is Bacon Lightning. I too was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome. Well, at age, at age 10. Oh, so this guy wins. Ha <laughs> ha. He, he got it a year earlier. I know exactly where you're coming from. What I sort of picked up on is that you have to have your own script to conquer social encounters. Like somebody asks what up and I say, man, I'm rocking and rolling. Get brave, accept the fact that you'll fuck up. It's okay to get teased a little as long as you draw a line somewhere. Nigga, if you're like me, you've already drafted dozens of scripts for the totally predictable shit that these basic niggas that are gonna end up talking to you would say. If I were to go to a party right now, I would have honestly prepared responses that I've probably rehearsed like 10 years ago when I used to give a damn about what it would come out sounding like. But I don't care now, baby. People would be like, hey, you know? Wow, your name's Kyle, that's so unique. You know, how's that spelled? Oh, C Y A E. Oh, wow, that's so different. That's so interesting. You know what I mean? And then they'd go into talking about, you know, whatever their pursuits are. And I'd say something like, so I'm playing this video game the other day, right? Anyway, number one. And I know this, is this one's going to be the doozy. Okay, number one. You know, what is it like to be autistic? For me, horrible. I am lonely. I want to be around people so much. 
I love talking. They taught me to talk and forget to give me others to talk to. Oh. I want to work, but I need supervision. I hit my head on things when I am upset. I hate that. My arms flap when I am excited and people stare. People stare for other reasons, too. Oh, no. And I love children and children love me. They love to talk to me and ask questions or talk to me about cartoons. I would never harm anyone, but their parents act like their children are in danger. And it makes me feel like I am a terrible person. Luckily, now I am friends with an eight-year-old and she is awesome. She loves Legos and we have lots to talk about. Um, and we talk about who is the best Disney princess. Explorers, I told her about an explorer in Lego, Johnny Thunder who explored tombs and she was suddenly decided that she loved the idea. And also about Doctor Who and time travel. Backseat of her car is a time machine when they when we go anywhere. So I guess in short, autism is lonely. It can cause a lot of pain. It's like being trapped in a body that is only half loaded. Just cause, um, just cause people are aware of autism or accept autism doesn't mean they will make time for those with autism. I also wish I could dress and shower myself and care for myself better and also go out on my own. I would go out every day. Friends make it easier. Jesus. My thoughts may have been a bit broken so hope this reads okay. Somebody else says, I also suggest, he says, he says, I also suggest reading this. But it's a five part thing. Maybe, maybe I'll read it later. Someone responds, I have a good friend who is autistic. He rocks his body and bounces a little and can't help it. He can't filter his words very well. He wishes he could be the guy who lives with the flow but pretty much needs structured plans and has a hard time if anything changes. He describes it as lonely too, but also frustrating. He says social situations are just too alien to him. He can't understand others well. He says he knows what he wants his mind and body to do, but they just don't. I had this piece of garbage car once, like it was really bad, and sometimes it would die. And the radio buttons didn't always work and it had steering and braking problems and the clutch app problems too. Before I got rid of it, I'd always get pissed driving it because I knew what it should be capable of doing and I knew what I was capable of doing in a normal working car, but I just couldn't get it right in that car. My friend told me that the way I acted driving that car is how he was in his head. He knew what his body and mind should be able to do. And he knew what he should be able to do in a working mind, but he couldn't. He was trapped in his body and mind like I was in that crap car. And it broke my heart. I don't know how he does it. I certainly couldn't. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. Unusual soup continues. I have structure too. Lots of routine. Lots of plans. I am okay changing things because my structure through support has become more vague slowly over time. Instead of watch Pokemon from 3 to 4 p.m., it will be watch TV. I am pretty good going off schedule now and doing some, some small adventures. I visit my neighbor today to ask if my leg was okay because there was blood on it and it was just a scratch. Once upon a time, that would have been hard. Therapy has helped a lot. Social things are hard. It is a different it is different for everyone and I often know what my feelings are, but I do not know what anyone else's are. When I watch TV with someone, I like to look at people to see if their reaction is the same as mine. It makes people feel very weirded out. Why are you staring at me? I do not mean to be so strange. I love people, but people have to make exceptions. Being my friend means having to look after me. Being my friend means understanding I can't meet you at the mall. You have to come to my house and, and take me. Being my friend means accepting I won't know when I have caused emotional harm 
through being too blunt or saying something honest when you wanted to lie. Does this color look okay on me? I rock a lot, I shake my legs a lot, I hum sometimes, I often recite the order of the keyboard when I am upset that things are not in order. I often went to touch things like flower petals and walls and trees and it can embarrass people who have never experienced being looked at in a bad way. This is heartbreaking. But I hope that these people don't feel alone. A lot of us are alone in another type of social way because um, some of us would rather die alone than, you know, associate with people that we don't consider ourselves compatible with. And if that means, you know, like we're into video games or we're into stupid ass geek culture and we want to sit at home and watch Star Wars or, you know, Lord of the Rings over and over, maybe watch some Simpsons, maybe watch some, uh, you know, Doctor Who Supernatural. And that means that, like, most of the people that we would find in some dumb, you know, bar setting or at a club are just not about the life that we live, you know? Then we got to accept that unless we're willing to fake it and be somebody that we're not, that we are not going to we're not going to be associating with people in a in a typical social setting. You know, some of us are charismatic and have what it would take to be the life of the party, so to speak. We can hold a room's attention in a nice booming voice and say things that would be interesting and get people laughing. But hey, you know, it's not really what what we want to do. It's not really who we are. Some of us would rather stay home and exist and reinvent what it means to uh, to have a relationship with a person, be it platonic or otherwise. I just hope people don't feel alone. Did you like this the depressing list? Oh, yeah. You know, I always find the good ones, baby. Nice and depressing for you. Depressing in the morning. Depressing how you like this list. I'm kidding. Um, you know. It's been a while, huh? I apologize. We'll figure something out soon. Um, the, the next one definitely won't sound this, uh, this terrible, but... You know, I tried. Love you, and we will talk soon. Bye.